protein digestion. Digestion and absorption. We've seen how carbohydrates are broken down and absorbed. Let's take a closer look at proteins. You know, oh yes you do, that proteins are strings of what? Indeed, a protein is just a string of amino acids. And the string, the size of the string totally varies. Proteins are broken down by proteases like pepsin in the stomach. There are different categories of, of protein digesting enzymes. We're, I'm cool with them all being proteases. Uh, the, the bottom line is that this group of protein digesting enzymes break the proteins down into either individual amino acids or dipeptides or tripeptides. So you've got this string of amino acids that maybe started out being thousands of amino acids long, and that is a functional, you know, meat protein or whatever. And these proteases or protein enzymes work together to break those proteins into amino acids, single amino acids, or groups of two amino acids or groups of three amino acids. Allow me to show you what happens inside the cells of your, uh, your epithelial cells. Once more, don't be disillusioned or distracted by my um, strangely shaped cell. I'm doing this just so I can fit everything in. First of all, I'm going to show you what happens with single amino acids. I'm going to show you how single amino acids um, are absorbed. And what I'm going to tell you is that there are a couple of new transporters. We will see these transporters again. We'll see them in the uh, urinary system when we look at how the kidney functions. But we, we didn't study them to start with. So uh, details of these guys, watch and learn. First of all, we have 20 possible different amino acids. And so there are many different kinds of these particular transporters that I'm going to draw just as circles. And I'm going to show you that they bring in amino acids into the cell. Remember, this was just a single amino acid. And like I said, there are transporters through whatever their mechanism is. They, are, they can be very specific to just a couple types of amino acids. So there are many different flavors of this transporter, and the amino acid needs its specific transporter in order to be able to get into the cell. How does it get in? Well, I've got news for you folks. Maybe this won't surprise you, but guess who it co-transports with? Sodium. That doesn't surprise anybody, does it? How do we have a sodium gradient in this cell? You know it's true. We actually have a sodium-potassium pump that's allowing, ooh, you know me gusta. I can't remember what color I made potassium, but it's not going to be green or blue. The sodium potassium pump uses energy to create a concentration gradient for sodium, and amino acids are carried in down the sodium concentration gradient. Um, that works. What else should we probably have in the wall so that our sodium potassium pump continues to work? We should probably have some potassium channels. It's interesting because your images in the textbook don't actually address that, and I'm not sure why. But we need to have those in order to make sure that this happens. Now, this is the weird part. This is the part that kind of has me, I don't quite understand it. And I'm going to make it a slightly different color, and you'll see why in a second here. Once the amino acid gets to this side, the amino acid, we want to get it out. We want to get it into the blood, right? But how, who's going to transport it? Here, we co-transport it in. This is the weird part that I don't 
quite understand. But look who anti-transports to get it out. How weird is that? So here, sodium comes in because of the sodium-potassium pump, and when it comes in, it brings in the amino acid using this awesome transporter. Thank you very much. Then we pump the sodium out with the sodium-potassium pump. A new transporter allows sodium in down its concentration gradient, but still is able, it must be a different mechanism, different structure of a protein, because now it pumps the amino acid out. That is, I want this transporter to work the same on both sides. You can see why it wouldn't work the same on both sides. You can see why, you know, that's not going to fly. So I would love to know more about are these guys in the same family? Do they have similar mechanisms? Or are they two totally different transporters with two totally different mechanisms? I don't know. I think that's interesting. So did you understand this picture? In we come using sodium concentration gradient, pump the sodium out. Sodium wants to come in on the basolateral membrane, and so we've got transporters in there that let the sodium in. Again, this time the amino acid gets pumped out while sodium comes in, and then we get our amino acids into the bloodstream like we wanted. That's one mechanism. <laughs> if we want to get in dipeptides or tripeptides, we actually use hydrogen ion concentration gradients. And, and this is just, again, another mechanism for doing this. So watch this one. This is really cool. You have a pump here. Mm, I'm going to make it green again. And the reason why I'm going to make it green is because this, we're, we're still using sodium. And this pump brings sodium in, and in order to do that, I don't know what happens first. We have a sodium gradient because of the sodium-potassium pump. So sodium comes in down its concentration gradient. I need more colors, folks. I need more colors. Color. We'll go with red. When sodium gets pumped out, it pumps out a hydrogen ion. So sodium goes down its concentration gradient. That energy is used to pump out a hydrogen ion. Now we've got hydrogen ions out here and not very many in here. So we've created a concentration gradient. Guess what happens? We're actually going to allow that guy back in, but in order to get back in, we're saying, dude, you got to do a little bit of work for us. If you want back in, you're going to have to bring one of these dire tripeptides. Tri you're going to bring those guys in. We pump the hydrogen ion out. The hydrogen ion comes back in using this new transporter that allows the di or tripeptides to come in. We have a similar situation as we had over here. So let's do a lighter purple color because it's still, the, it's, it's transporting the same folks. But again, we have a different direction. We want these guys to go out. If it was the same mechanism, we'd have to also pump hydrogen ions out. And we don't. Why? The hydrogen ions actually come in with this guy. So two different pumps, although they're pumping the same molecules. They're just doing them in different directions. So again, I'm really curious about the molecular mechanism of this. In the end, Bottom line, we end up with these amino acids and di and tripeptides in the bloodstream sent to, hmm, this is interesting, sent to the liver, which makes complete sense because all the blood from your digestive tract goes to the liver first. Do you remember that? Hmm, I might have to talk about that at some point, but I don't think we're going to have time this time. Okay, I think I've got all my transporters. I, I like it. It looks pretty. You might want to write about it and clarify who's going where and why. And if anybody wants to investigate the names of those actual little fellows, I would love it. Fat. Fat in the house. Let's go.